you run all your wood through the pointers, you've got nice, smooth, and, and squared wood to work with, you've got to put it together. So how do you do that? Well, you use joints, of course, to do that, and there are all different kinds of joints. We've got a blog that'll show you a lot of those, but I'm just going to show you some of the simple ones right now. You, you've got the basic, what's called a butt joint, two pieces of wood. They just go to, uh, together perpendicularly like that, and in the end you'd drill a, or drive a couple of nails, or you'd glue, or you'd screw those things together. It's a strong joint, but it doesn't really have a lot of structural integrity on its own, so uh, if you're going to use it, make sure that it is strong enough for the purpose you've got in mind. Now, again, the butt joint just like that, that's not to be confused with a butt crack. That's a plumbing term, has nothing to do at all with uh, making joints in wood, so just wanted to clarify that for you. Now, the other, another kind of joint that is uh, pretty easy to make with the right tool, this is a, uh, a pocket joiner from Craig, it's a pocket jig, um, is the pocket joint, and basically, what's cool about that is that you hide the screws that you're using to join the wood, you join it like so, you put the screws in the uh, slots right there, the, uh, the screws are basically invisible when you've got this thing done, and it's a very, very strong joint. We ha have more on that in episode 11, so take a look at that, and we'll show you how this little thing works. It's really very handy and very simple to use, and it's, it makes really, it's a, it's a great way to join wood together. So take a look at that. There are also tongue and groove joints, and those are seen, you see that in a lot of siding or flooring and other applications, but basically it's kind of like it sounds. You've got a, a tongue coming out of one end of a, a board and a groove in the other. They fit together like so, and they make a nice uh, uh, meeting place at the top, and they, it looks nice, and it's functional, and it kind of keeps things in place and keeps them aligned. So tongue and groove. Miter joints are, are joints that probably everybody is familiar with. And these things, you know, I always kind of think of these primarily as picture frame type joints. A couple of 45 degree angles on the end. You put them together like so, glue and or, or different types of joiners for these things. They, they make nice corners. They're good for trim, picture frames, and a whole lot of other uses. So uh, miter joints are, are very, very common and they're just a, a nice looking way to, to put pieces of wood together. There are a lot of other more complex uh, uh, joints that we talk about on our blog, on our website. Uh, for example, there is a mortise and tenon, which is a very strong joint, but it's, uh, you know, it's not a real easy one to make. It's a little more advanced, and you need a jig for that a lot of times. And it's just uh, uh, something that's been around for a long, 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 long time. Very strong, but yeah, take a look at that. Um, we've also got some other types of... Uh, joints in there. We've got box joints, which are also known as finger joints, and you've probably seen those, for example, in drawers. There are a bunch of little rectangles cut in the ends of the, uh, the sides and the back of the drawers. They interlock, they're glued together, very strong, very sturdy, but again, a little bit more complicated to make. So there are a whole bunch of different ways to join wood, and we've got a lot of those listed, and we show you some of those on that blog. So take a look at that. You'll really be glad you did because you can do things probably well beyond what you even thought you could do if you put a little time and effort into the process. So thanks for being with us today, and we'll see you next time.